Hey everyone, welcome back, it's Pro Warriors here. Today, I'm testing the final official update of the Yuzu emulator before it was shut down. I've received a ton of requests from you all saying that the original Yuzu still performs better than most of the newer forks, and honestly, many of those forks haven't brought any significant improvements yet. Yuzu has always been more than just an emulator, it's been our trusted gateway to enjoying Nintendo Switch games right on Android. Even now, I'm still blown away by how well it runs. So in this video, I'll take you step by step through setting it up so you can get the same top-tier performance from this last legendary build. After facing a lawsuit, Yuzu had to shut down its website, Discord, and GitHub, making it nearly impossible to access. But after a lot of digging, I managed to get my hands on the app. Once you've downloaded the APK file for the emulator, go ahead and install the app. After installation, opening the app reminds me of the old days with that familiar Yuzu getup because other fork slightly changes it get started and then grant the necessary permissions to allow notifications from the emulator. If you've used other emulators like Eden or Citron, you'll notice the features and UI are quite similar. Because all emulators are made from Yuzu, you can say mother of all emulators. Next, the emulator will prompt you to enter your production ID or product keys. Without these keys, you won't be able to run any games. The emulator will then ask you to locate your games folder. Once the folder is added, Yuzu will automatically detect and display the games in your library. Disclaimer, the emulator itself is legal, but using illegal ROMs is forbidden. I do not support or provide access to pirated games, so please use legal copies for your safety. Wait at this point, you might be wondering which games you should try. Before you jump into any game, it's important to check whether it's playable on the emulator. Yuzu has a compatibility list available on their GitLab page. From there, you can easily verify if your favorite title is supported. The great thing is that Yuzu supports both NSP and XCI formats, giving you flexibility in how you manage your game files. Let's Let's configure the settings, but keep in mind that performance can vary significantly from device to device and game to game. However, you'll gain a clear understanding of how everything works. Click on the gear icon in the bottom right corner, then select Advanced Settings and open the System tab. I recommend turning off the Limit Speed option so the emulator can utilize your device's full potential. But sometimes, this can actually cause lag because disabling Limit Speed forces 60 FPS, and some games may not handle that well leading to stutter and lag issues. If you enable docked mode, it will increase the resolution, but might reduce performance. So keep it disabled if your device isn't powerful enough. In the graphics section, keep CPU accuracy set to normal. You can set the resolution to 4X for high-end devices, but I suggest using 1X 720p for a balanced experience. If you're on a low-end device, go with 0.5X for smoother gameplay. Higher resolutions require more power, so adjust this based on your device's capabilities. For V-Sync mode, I recommend using Immediate, which basically means it's turned off. Leave Windows Binary at default by near. For anti-aliasing method, set it to FXAA. Set anisotropic filtering to 2X. In aspect ratio, choose Stretch to Window for maximum display coverage. Enable Force Maximum Clocks only if you're using an Adreno GPU, but be cautious, as this might cause overheating. Enable Use Asynchronous Shaders to compile shaders asynchronously, reducing stutter, although it may introduce Glitches. Enable use reactive flushing to improve rendering accuracy in some games, but note that it might cost some performance. Now go to the debug settings. Here, only Vulkan API is available, so we don't have other choices. Feel free to experiment with these settings to find what works best for your device, and if anything goes wrong, you can always reset to default. Next, head back to the main settings menu, where you'll find an option to install custom GPU drivers. By default, the emulator selects your device's GPU driver, but you can install a custom one for better performance. For this video, I'm using the Qualcomm Adreno 805 driver. To choose the best GPU driver, first check your device's Adreno GPU model using apps like AIDA64 or CPU-Z. Then try custom drivers like V615, V630, or V805 from trusted sources to see which offers the best performance. Test each one and stick with the driver that delivers the highest FPS and visual quality without causing overheating. Unfortunately, non-Snapdragon users can't access this feature and must rely on default settings. Now I'm going to install the firmware file to enable QLauncher and see if it works. First, open Manage Yuzu Data, then select Install Firmware. Browse to the folder where you stored the firmware files and install them. Next, open the applet launcher to check if it's working. It's really great. 
It's working really well. Let's check out some popular Nintendo Switch games on Yuzu's last official build and how they perform. The Legend of Zelda. Breath of the Wild runs around 35 to 40 frames per second, but can drop in busy areas. For smooth play, keep resolution at 1x native, CPU accuracy on normal, and use Vulkan API. If you lag or crash, try lowering resolution to 0.5x, disable docked mode, and clear shader cache by restarting the emulator. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate runs steady at 20 to 30 FPS. Use 1x or 2x resolution. Enable asynchronous shaders to reduce stutter and turn on FXAA for better visuals. If it lags, disable reactive flushing and close background apps. Prince of Persia. The Lost Crown Deluxe Edition holds 35 to 45 frames per second consistently. Use 1x resolution and enable force maximum clocks only if you have an Adreno GPU. If you experience slowdowns, turn off docked mode and limit other running apps. Custom GPU drivers on Snapdragon devices can boost performance a lot, so try those if possible. Overall, adjust resolution and settings based on your device, and check Yuzu's compatibility list for the best experience. Yes, I admit that Yuzu is still very promising, and on some devices, it even performs better than the latest forks. I just want to say thank you to the Yuzu developers for creating this amazing emulator and for giving us the chance to relive and preserve these classic games. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more emulator updates and gaming content.